Good day and welcome to the experiment.com Ocean Discovery League seminar on ocean solutions crowdfunding. We're so happy to have all of you with us today. My name is Katie Croft Bell, founder and president of the Ocean Discovery League, and I will be your moderator today. So today we'll be talking about how to apply for crowdfunding grants through experiment.com Ocean Solutions Fund, which supports experiments that seek to better understand or improve the health of our world's oceans. We're very grateful for OceanKind, OceanX, Schmidt Marine Technology Partners, and the Paul M. Engel Family Foundation, which generally, generously support the fund. So we have a cracking speaker lineup for you today. Uh, first, we'll hear from David Lang, Executive Director of the Experiment Foundation and co-founder of OpenROV, and Jenny, Dr. Jenny Chow, excuse me, Community Manager here at the Ocean Discovery League. They will walk you through the background on the Ocean Solutions Fund, as well as the application process from beginning to end. We'll then hear from three of the awardees um, from 2022. First, to talk to you about their experience in the submission process will be Dr. Michelle Casabone manette and Ryan Manette. They're both directors of the Marine Conservation NGO Species, which is based in Trinidad and Tobago. They were recently received an award for their Sea Turtle Citizen Science Project. Next up, we'll hear from Salome Buglas. She will discuss her strategies for promotion of her project. Salome is a PhD student at the University of British Columbia and a research scientist at the Charles Darwin Research Station in the Galapagos. She received experiment funding to study deep water kelp forests in the Galapagos and actually just returned from her project there. And finally, Dr. Sarah Glasser will talk about in-kind donations. Sarah leads the Ocean Futures team at the World Wildlife Fund and is working with graduate student and marine biologist Abdirman Abdi Ali on his project to understand the biodiversity of Somali waters. After that, we should have about 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. And please feel free throughout the seminar to put questions in the chat and our team will try to answer them as we go along so that we can answer as many questions as possible. So with that, I'd love to turn it over to David Lang and Jenny Chow. Thanks. So Jenny, you want me to go? Go for it, yeah. Okay, Thanks. cool. All right, sounds good. So um, I think the, the best way to explain this, why we're doing this, is to tell you a short story of how it came about. So my name's David. I started this project called Open ROV 10 years ago, which was the goal was to create a really low cost open source underwater robot, an ROV that anyone can use. And my friend Eric and I did not have any money to build this tool. And we really wanted it for ourselves, for our own questions and exploration. So we started sharing it out, our designs online. And we got a small um, grant for $5,000, uh, actually $7,000 to finish our prototype. And then we launched that project on Kickstarter. And that initial boost allowed us to buy all the parts we needed to build the kits. And then we launched on Kickstarter and raised a bunch more money. And But more importantly, got to distribute these, these open ROV kits all over the world. And um, that ended up turning into a company and all sorts of things. And but the, but the most important thing was that initial boost, those, those initial people who believed in it. And now, as a, a lot of you probably know, like ROVs um, are a lot cheaper than they were 10 years ago. Um, you can go on Amazon now and get one for 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. And I'm really proud of the impact that that project has had on the world. And so I started talking to some of these um, ocean funders about how do we kickstart more projects like that, that don't necessarily fit into this kind of traditional science funding ecosystem, which is, you know, the NSF or NOAA or all the, the, the funders. How do we make sure that those projects that are kind of out there, but are important, the kind of so crazy, it just might work ideas. How do we make sure that they have a way to get started and not just get a little bit of funding, but also find a community of people who, um, who will get behind them and, and believe in it. Because that what we found was that was just as important. Jenny, if you wanna go to the next slide. Cool. All right, so this is um, uh, kind of recapping what I just said, but I think it's worth emphasizing what we're aiming for here. And that is a uh, projects that 
um, are that you want to do, things that you think are really important. Don't don't come to us thinking you're trying to impress us with, uh, you know, you're trying to do what the grant funder wants to hear. We're much more interested in the project that you think is most pressing in either in your local um, area or that you think is a is a bottleneck that's holding back the entire field. Um, so that's what we want is the projects that that you really, really personally um, believe in. We're also really biased towards technology. A lot of our funders fund technology. And so um, if you have ideas for new tools or techniques or you want to test them out to get some preliminary data or build a, a first uh, prototype, this is a really good um, uh, option for you too. There's a little bit of nuance to that because every project on experiment has to be a question. Um, but if you have a tool idea, I think it's pretty easy to find uh, a, a scientific question that you can attach that to um, that will be a good test of that. So uh, those are the, the high level things. And, and I'm glad Jenny put this bullet point of um, educational and outreach projects are, are not a good fit for this, this program. Um, I think they're super important. Um, and I think there are some good programs to support them, but what um, Experiment is really aiming to do is to uh, answer questions and help build new tools um, and techniques. So uh, that's a, a overview of that and go to the next slide. And then the other important things to know are the, the process and Jenny and I are going to go over this process, but the, uh, the amounts we're talking about are really less than $10,000. Um, we can, I'm going to put a link in here as soon as, um, in a second, that'll have uh, some of the projects that you can, you can go and you can click on and see uh, how much they've raised, but it's really anything between $2,000 and $15,000 that have been successful so far. Um, there are some limits just based on the, um, the grant funding we've got and the, the, what experiment can do around which countries the funds can go to. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, and, you know, we'll, we're able to fund quickly, um, but there is a process to um, this whole thing. So you have to put together a, a proposal on experiment, you have to launch a campaign, it's 30 days. Um, and then, but the funding payouts are really fast um, after that. And so it is, we're not, we're not just giving grants, what we're doing is we're contributing to um, campaigns that folks are running on experiment, which is an all or nothing model. Um, but we, what we're finding is that the, the initial grant funding really um, emboldens people and helps them be successful there. So those are the, the main bullet points. And I can, from there, I think I'll pass it on to Jenny. Thanks very much, David. So I am going to help guide you through the process to actually start a project page. Um, and then I'll hand it off to David again so we can go through what happens after you submit. So. First, I'll introduce myself. So I'm Jenny Slozik Chow. Uh, my background's in researching phytoplankton aggregation and the marine carbon cycle. And I serve as the community program manager at ODL. So I'm gonna walk you through um, this protocol, the experiment protocol, which is the overall process. Um, and this will help you um, first learn all the steps um, in, in, and get you towards the end. Um, and then I'll give you, after that overview, I'll get into the actual project page. So the process begins with first um, defining what your project is and creating your funding target. Um, once you get to this, this step, you've actually already thought through what is the content that you'll be putting on your project page. Um, after this point, this is when you're ready to seek out endorsements from your colleagues and your peers. Then you'll submit your project page to the experiment team for review. Once accepted, you'll take your project live and begin telling the world about your project. So you'll be promoting your exciting work that you've planned and doing so actively throughout a, a period of about a month. Um, and that will be your crowdfunding campaign duration. Within the first seven to 10 days of your, the start of your campaign, this is when the Ocean Solutions Grant can kick in and offer up to about 50% of your target as a seed funding. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. Um, once you hit your funding goal, you'll receive your payout within days, which 
as David mentioned, it's, you know, it's fast payouts, and this is quite different than a lot of other um, funding models. Um, lastly, you're going to share your progress, your learnings, your curiosity, those discoveries with your supporters, and you can do this through an online lab notebook, um, which is referred to as the lab notes. So overall, um, these are the steps that are with that are the components rather that are within your project page. Um, I encourage you all to dive right in. Don't hesitate to start a project page. It is a draft that you can leave and come back to as often as you need. And you can and be you can be working on this for as long as you need before you hit submit. Um, the link that I provide here um, is uh, the starting point in order to allow you to have your grant tagged with the Ocean Solutions grant. Um, and this will just allow us to see it more quickly um, and have those funds from Ocean Solutions get directed towards your project. Um, I'm going to quickly shift over to an actual project page from one of our colleagues, Sheena Talma, in order to better illustrate the components that go in the project page, which are the overview, the budget, the endorsed by section, your timeline, as well as your campaign duration. So bear with me just a moment, please. And here we are. This is Sheena Talma's project page. She's actively doing this research right now. I believe she's on a cruise as, as we speak, doing some of this work. Um, you'll see the landing page that has your title. Um, there will be a ticker here to the right of your picture as you're doing your funding campaign. You'll note below the picture are the tags. So there's the Ocean Solutions tag. Um, also, you can add, um, you can type in other tags as well. Um, and when you get to this section, um, you'll note that the overview consists of subsections. So there's about this page. I'll scroll down. There's the context of the research. There's the significance of the project. There's the goals of the project. And you'll note throughout there are these hyperlinks, which will refer to um, relevant articles, reference web pages, as well as peer review research articles. You'll see the text is quite dense. It's specific, it has actionable steps and outcomes. The measurables are clearly stated. Um, but it's also quite brief. Um, we'll move on to the budget. And here you'll see this is um, a quite detailed budget. So your budget need not be this detailed, but it, it's quite useful to see the breakdown of other project specific costs. Um, you might find that scanning through um, other experiment project pages might be really informative as you're trying to develop your budget. And there is some additional text which describes how this budget will be applied and used within the project. Next, we have the endorsed by section. And this is where you are able to get your colleagues and your peers to voice in maybe just two or three sentences, their support for your credentials, or perhaps they might be adding some confirmation to the significance and importance of the particular work that you're pursuing. There's the project timeline. Generally, this spans over several months and it's, it's nice and succinct, um, spelling out some of the specific milestones that you'll be working towards. And finally, there is the team. And your team could be small, it could be a single person or a couple. This is a, a nice large team. And lastly, there is the lab notes here on the landing page, which is like a blog. Um, you can use this throughout your funding campaign as well as to update your, your supporters on your progress. So I'm going to shift back to our seminar now. Just to go over a few final tips for getting your project page started. So I imagine many of you have several ideas that you're passionate about pursuing. And part of this challenge of starting a project page might be articulating what project would be feasible for crowdfunding within the budgets 
that are typical for the experiment foundation. So I have a few points that I found helpful when working with others while they're creating their project page. First, address the scope of your project. What is your elevator pitch? You've heard this many times before in science. Um, also think of what is your tweet? What's your Instagram story or your Facebook post? You're gonna be sharing your research with your friends, your family, your colleagues, new and old, really with the world. And they wanna be part of your solution, your discovery. Um, but the story that you're sharing with them, it needs to be sticky. Um, ultimately, that story might need to be a singular thread or a small number of details um, that help lead to a, a main point, a main takeaway. Um, also, allow the constraints that we have in place here in the Experiment Foundation process to be your guide. So the budgets, as you heard, are generally less than $10,000. Often they're around the sweet spot seems to be $5,000. The text that you write should be aimed at an audience that is interested in science, but not necessarily scientists. You have your, each subsection of the overview as you saw on Sheena's page, it's quite succinct. Approximately each subsection is about a hundred words. So they might be a little bit less, they might grow up and swell up to being around 150 words, but it is quite, um, quite direct and to the point. Um, and this is not a long writing exercise. Generally, um, you'll find that the projects um, is an excellent way, looking at project pages of others is an excellent way to, um, get your brain in sync with the culture of this platform and the methods that others have used in expressing their ideas or sharing out their project progress or their crowdfunding campaign progress with others. Um, it'll help you get comfortable pushing through that initial stage in developing your project page and help you be more confident with your approach. Um, as a final check, before submitting your project, I would take a look at the core criteria which the experiment team uses as they review your project. And we'll have a few details on this um, a bit later in the presentation. So I hope with this information that in the near future, you'll feel encouraged to go ahead and start your project page. And please know that the whole experiment team is there on your side as well as ODL um, in order to help along the way. And so now that we've heard about this process, we can move on and learn about what happens after submission. So I'll hand it over to David. Kenny, that was awesome. That's, Thanks. there's so much good, having coached a lot of people through this process, um, you just packed in so much actually really useful information about how to do this. Um, I wanna like just take a deep breath because I think, I, I can't see anybody's faces out there, but I think, I just want to address this possible concern that some of you have may have of, oh my gosh, it seems like a lot. It seems like there's a crowdfunding thing. It has to be public. There's all these things I have to fill out. There's all these things. It's really pretty straightforward. It's, um, if you go to experiment.com slash start, it'll walk you through it. And from the beginning of what's your question. And it, it really is just like a step-by-step. And it may seem like a lot of work to fill out your page or to and to make it public, but I promise you all of that work that you're doing up front is really valuable later on down the road. You see links there to Sheena's project and she's able to update this whole community that she's built. So I think that's important to get into your, to, to put into your mind that what this is, what the experiment page is, is an open source, a public grant proposal. And, but the grant proposal is also the grant reporting mechanism is also, it also gets a DOI number. So you'd be able to share it and cite this in the future. So all this work that we're doing up front is actually really valuable, both for funders, um, but also for promoting your project and talking about your work and sharing it down the road. So I, I just want to, if you're feeling apprehensive, like, wow, this sounds like a lot of work, just trust me um, that it, it ends up being worth it in the end. So um, Jenny talked you all the way up through the review process when you hit submit. 
And I think a lot of people get apprehensive that, um, oh my gosh, if I'm gonna review it, then I'm gonna get the thumbs up or the thumbs down. That's actually not what happens. Um, the experiment team, there's an experiment team that reviews the um, every application or every project that's submitted. And what they're reviewing for is that it's uh, for scientific rigor. Is the hypothesis clear? Are the links cited? There's a and is it formatted well? Is it is it clear, concise, and rigorous? And so they're trying to help you with that. And they'll make comments and, and suggest things, and then it'll go back to you for another quick revision. So it, I would say have a bias towards um, submitting early. Don't be so, um, it doesn't have to be perfect because it, you'll have another rev at it. Um, and the experiment team uh, reviews projects once or twice a week. Um, so there's a pretty quick turnaround on that. Um, but the experiment team has been doing this for 10 years. They have so much experience with crowdfunding. They're trying to help you succeed. They won't, they know what works uh, and they're trying to help your project get there in terms of clarity, but also in terms of formatting and rigor and, and all of that stuff. So uh, that's what that process, that's what that review process is like. You can jump to the next slide. And then once your project is approved, it goes live on the site. And this is, I think, where everybody is the most afraid where they have to share their project, they have to promote it. And I think everybody has this light bulb that goes off that says, well, I don't know, I don't know people. I don't have a network, I don't have these things. And I, I, I hope that you suspend that, that fear because there's a really powerful uh, thing that happens when you ask the world for help. When you just put it out there and say, here's what I really wanna do and I would love to have you be a part of this journey uh, with me. I've run, I think, seven crowdfunding campaigns in my life. Some of them were wildly successful, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, and some of them were total duds. And I learned more from the ones that were total duds um, than I did from the successes. But what is really important is this is like you're planting a flag, you're putting up the bat signal, and you're, and you're inviting people to uh, be a part of this work. And I think that's a really uh, emotionally vulnerable, um, but powerful, powerful act. And you'll hear from folks um, like Salome and others who uh, have gone through this and um, have kind of met the community on the other side and it can be really exciting. So um, there are a lot of tips for, prom for promoting your thing. You know, the one thing is to tweet about it, email people you know, uh, we have resources that experiment and Katie and I and Ocean Discovery League as well um, have helped promote projects. Um, there are a bunch of tactics like that, but I think the most important thing is to like get ready to feel okay about inviting people to be a part of your project because a lot of really good things and cool things and can happen uh, when you do that. Um, we have the, the next slide. This is, oh, that's a cool graphic. Nice that they jump up. Um, so these are just a handful of tweets that um, we've collected of people who are promoting their project and sharing it. Um, you know, Twitter has been a great way to do that. Um, we'll see if it continues to be. <laughs> um, but uh, it's pretty easy to do it. it. It may seem like a lot, but there's, there's we're waiting on Twitter to help um, advance it too. Um, but there, there are a lot of resources for you uh, to help get the word out uh, when the time comes. You wanna to go to the next one? Okay, so how the grant funding actually works is on the back end, the um, ODL team and I see every application. So as soon as you get started, we can see that you've submitted an application uh, and then we'll review it. And so. We review just about every week, um, any projects that come in and <clears throat> we'll send you a, if the project meets the kind of the goals of the Ocean Solutions Grant, we'll send you a grant agreement and it's a separate DocuSign. And once you sign that, we'll be waiting that as soon as your, your project launches, we'll try, we'll try to be the first pledge in because the getting that initial um, bit going is really the, always the hardest. Um, we'll try to be that. We can't always just because like the paperwork takes a couple of days sometimes and 
um, but our goal is to be to be the first funder. Um, and yeah, so that's that's how that process works. Is we're watching for it on the back end. If you want to, you can always uh, ping ping me. Um, yeah, I'm on experiment. You can just send me a message through the system and say, "Hey, David, have you seen our project? What do you think?" Um, so um, that's that's that. Um, we can go to the next one. Once the project closes, so once the campaign is done and you've met your goals, um, the payouts you can it's all done through Stripe, so they can the payouts can happen almost um, like within a couple of days. So you what you have to do this is important actually. So the way experiment is currently set up is the the project creator has to have a bank account in the us uk australia um, or canada we're working on adding the full list of stripe countries this is not we don't have this yet but i'm hoping early next year that we'll have this full list of countries uh, that stripe supports so you can see that there um, of where we're hoping to expand to um, if it may be necessary to have like a, a collaborator, um, if you're outside of these countries, sometimes people have colleagues or ways that they know how to get funding through, you can definitely do that. Um, but we can support country, we can support most um, projects, projects in most countries, the payout system is, is more constrained. Um, so the other thing on there, I'm glad Jenny had this bullet point, is there are some platform, Experiment has an 8% platform fee, and then the payment processors usually have 2 to 4%. So make sure in your budget that you just add um, the platform fees, um, and, and we're, you know, it's part of the budget, so we'll cover it, and we'll, we'll get over that. And then the lab notes. So I, I said Experiment was a... Um, an open grant proposal, but it's also kind of an, a lab notebook. So I'm so thrilled to be following along with all these projects that uh, we funded so far, because I get these missives from the field. Like Salome, like what she's doing out in the field, I love getting these email updates. So as soon as you post a lab note, all of your backers immediately get um, emailed. Um, this is a great way to kind of build momentum while you're doing your fundraising campaign, but it's also a great way to um, keep everybody posted about your research and kind of keep people engaged. And so part of the grant agreement is that you will update us at least once, like at, at the year mark of how things are going, even if they're not going well. Um, so you are required to have kind of lab notes afterwards, um, but, I, but I hope you'll, you'll, you'll find them to be a useful tool to kind of continue to engage a community. So, okay. That's it. All right, great. All right. So um, uh, now the fun part, we're going to talk to some folks who um, have actually done this, have actually started a campaign and, and some of them have already um, been out in the field. Um, so Michelle and Ryan, do you want to uh, jump in here? Katie, do you want to introduce? Yeah, we can just hand it straight over to Michelle and Ryan. Take it away. Yeah. Hi. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to apologize, it started to rain by us now, so if our sound quality is not too great, I apologize for that in advance. Um, so basically, we'll be talking about um, the writing process and submission process with the reviews. Um, this was, the experiment platform was very different from what we were used to with other grants. Um, as, as Jenny mentioned, there was a very strict word limit in the application form, which we were not used to, and a very um, specific outline that we had to follow. So this challenged us from our usual proposal writing style to fit into this template. Um, and it kind of forced us to really focus on the key aspects of the project and um, what we wanted to achieve and to try and get an overview of the method that we um, that we were planning to use and what makes our project important to us, rather than focusing on all the details of how we plan to execute um, the project. Uh, it was important to really get our mind in the state that the project, we're not writing this proposal for other scientists. 
advocates for the general public, as well as other scientists. So we had to make sure that um, everything we put in our proposal could be was easy to understand for the layperson, but had enough detail that other scientists could would realize that the methodology is sound, the science is sound, and it's a worthwhile project. Um, everything had to be clear and you know, non-technical, yet we were encouraged to use uh, references to support all of our statements to ensure that the, the merit and accuracy of any claims we make was sound. Um, the Experiment Foundation had, they have very clear reference guide documents that basically gives us step-by-step -step, um, gu guides of how to, in, how to produce your project, how to write your document, um, things like how to produce and develop our video. Um, you know, everything was clearly laid out in the reference documents. If there was anything we didn't understand or still had questions, the project team was just an email away to assist us. So we had very good communication back and forth. Um, and we, even after we submitted the, our proposal, we actually submitted without our video um, because we didn't have the time at that point to get the video done. And we submitted without the video and were able afterwards to upload the video and amend the project um, going forward. Um, the review process was, again, very different from the proposal we are, we are used to writing. Um, usually, we would, you write a proposal and you submit and hope for the best. You never really get much feedback other than you're successful or you're not successful. And if you're not successful, then you don't know what exactly went wrong, why your proposal was not successful. The experiment team was very responsive. I think we submitted, when we submitted our project, we got feedback within five days from the review team. And um, making our changes, the overall process from submission to um, approval of the project took in total 11 days. So that was very quick. And most of those days was really us adjusting our project and so the delay was not on the experiment side, it was our, um, our adjustments and modifications to the project. Now, one of the things we really liked about the platform is the flexibility of it. Um, you know, we, we submitted another proposal just around the same time as we were creating the experiment project. And we were able to adjust our budget and our our methodology on the experiment platform once we heard back from that proposal. So, you know, we were able to better suit the experiment project to the resources that we were already given. And, you know, it was, overall, it was a very pleasant experience. Um, the project page remains a living document with its own DOI number. So it kind of acts as a, um, a continuous report, so everyone is aware of what's happening. And you know, we had a couple of minor hiccups in doing it, but overall, everything was resolved very quickly, and it was a really great experience for us. Wonderful, thank you so much, Ryan. Um, and I will turn it over to Salome. Um, who will talk to you about her experience um, more on the promotion and tapping into your network side. Take it away, Sal. Thank you. Can everybody hear me good? Can I just get a thumbs up? Awesome. Great. Uh, I'm actually in the Galapagos right now, so internet can be a bit wobbly. So if I, if I jump off, I'll try to come back ASAP. Um, but yeah, I, um, I had a great experience um, doing this experiment uh, crowdfunding campaign. Um, so as David said, as one of the, I definitely found it very intimidating to put myself, you feel like you're putting yourself out there, you're putting your project out there. Um, 
and I I did I was t a little bit scared about like how many people will actually how many people will I find to support this um, but when I at the end I just decided okay I'm going to tap into every network that I have and this started off firstly um, the easier thing which is like putting it into Twitter and into Facebook to the world very loosely very unspecific and then as time went by um, I decided to go more targeted and that was really helpful I did targeted emails um, and I my first round and it's always more comfortable to do it to friends and family those who love and support you uh, no matter what and you can start with them but you know, I, I, my emails were very much like not asking them for money because they are always going to support me <laughs> without a crowdfunding campaign, but asking them to share it with their friends. So it's kind of just like asking other people to tap into their networks for you. And I even wrote in my emails a paragraph that they could paraphrase me on to make it easier, just make it easier for your friends and family to, to share the message. And so that maybe they're not good at selling your work, but just help them sell your work. So maybe even just like write a paragraph that they can share. And I spoke to my, I remember talking to my supervisor about it. And then he says like, email all those academics that you know. So if you are, and, and if, you, if you are a student and you know, and you have an academic community, tap into them, especially the older and senior <laughs> and retired ones, they have money <laughs> and they know more people with money. Um, and by money, I mean like they're the ones who are willing to give like 50 to 100 dollars. Um, whereas like I feel like as a student, when you're asking your friends, just like yourself, everyone's like broke. So <laughs> they can only help you with like 10 dollars. So definitely try to reach, reach those people who would love the work that you're doing and are well established and you often you feel like you don't know them but you just need to know three and they know 20 each and just make again make it easy for them to sell like give them a little paragraph and the other thing that i tapped into this really old network called facebook if some of you still know it <laughs> that was um that's where also the uh, the older people are uh with deeper pockets <laughs> so that was um really helpful and um i did the things that i the things that i'm not that comfortable doing like reels and I got some young people to help me do that and um, and and I didn't even tap into now I'm on Instagram after so many people telling me I should be on it but I think I in under I think at the time I had a three months time limit to reach my goal and I think that was really important as well because that kind of like puts a um, fire under your ass <laughs> to like just get this going get this out of the way and not spend like six months agonizing over who else can I contact and um and I at the time I didn't even t uh, network and uh, tap into um into Instagram which I feel like was a probably would have sped things up if I had so if, if this is something you have then this is a great place to do that and then the other ones that took me a big bit longer to realize what I tapped into was the slack groups all of you probably are in some kind of slack channel there's that's a great place too and um, yeah and then I also when I gave a presentation uh, at the time I think I gave two online that was the on online seminars were everywhere online during the pandemic at the end I was just like do you want to help me out here's the link <laughs> to my experiment page and so yeah, I actually had over I, I had over 60, 60 supporters, and many of them I didn't know personally. So it definitely paid off to like ask people to ask their friends. Um, and yeah, I think remember those networks of people that you have. Go into your email box, look at people that you don't even remember knowing, and <laughs> just remember the link you had to them, and just yeah. I but I would say be targeted. Don't just do one email and send it to everybody. Like do maybe certain groups. So it's, they feel like everyone feels like you are attentive of them receiving your email and possibly replying. And um, what, what other things really worked? Um, I had, I didn't have a video either, but um, I already had a video from the past. So if you have the page is really good at like allowing you to include 
other com science communication that you've done related to the work that you're doing. And lastly, I would just add that to this day, the um, experiment uh, website, uh, plat like my, my um, page where I did the fundraising is a, um, is a communication tool for me. Like when people ask me about the work I do, I just tell them go on this platform and I tell them, um, I mean, there's no, I don't think they can donate at this point anymore, but it's a great place for them to learn about the work I did because it was, it did take me a while to write, but it was such a good opportunity to narrow down my research into understandable um, for a wider public. And I actually used a lot of the writing to write a concept note. So it kind of forced me to stop being nerdy and full of jargon, but do the science come um, in a proven and tested way, given that it reached audiences and made them want to fun. All right, I'll pass it on to um, uh, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to see so much enthusiasm. And the first thing I'd like to say is that this platform, they want to fund you. And that feels so different from so many other grants and funding opportunities where a lot of times, and I'm speaking as someone who has applied to NSF multiple times, you feel like if you make one mistake, you're out. And the review process was so helpful for the project I was part of. And we got wonderful feedback and went back and forth and back and forth. And they gave us really constructive ideas on how to make the project fit into what they were looking for to ultimately be successful for funding. So my name is Sarah Glasser. I work for the World Wildlife Fund, but I used to work for a foundation called One Earth Future. And that's how I met um, Abdi Rahman Abdi, who is the, the lead on this project. And he and I, I, I had a team who worked in the Somali region and Abdi Rahman was a student at East Africa University. And we met through his studies and some outreach projects that, that my program had in the Somali region. And I want to say how he kind of brought me along on his project. Every, he, he worked by going to the beach, identifying fish, noting, taking pictures, making measurements. And then he created one of the, he actually created the first field guide to marine fishes written in the Somali language. And that's what the experiment.com platform funded. Um, so every time he'd go to the beach, he'd send me pictures of sharks and fish and we'd walk, work through the identification together. And that was just how we formed our relationship with each other. So then when I found out about this opportunity, I sent it to him and it was so perfect for getting that small amount of funding. And I'm so happy to say that he's in the publication stage right now and printing his books and we'll be able to make a completed video at the end of this um, to show the book that's going to be released in Somalia. But what I want to talk about is in-kind donations. So one of the challenges we faced is that in Somalia, credit cards are very rare. Most people who have credit cards need to have them through banks, through relationships with other countries like England. So that made it difficult for his network to make donations. So he was very creative and innovative and didn't give up. And he went to individuals in person, um, including people in the Ministry of Fisheries. And he went to his alma mater, the university. And one of the things that was in our budget was when the book, The Field Guide is published, He's going to do a public release where he presents it, where he distributes copies to the university, because one of his goals is to get this book in the hands of marine science students. Um, and so the university was able to cover the cost of renting the venue for that book release, and that counts as an in-kind donation. So when you're thinking about ways to build your budget, think about the things that actually could be donated in-kind. So an in-kind donation is where someone gives you a good or a service instead of just the money directly, but that good or service, like the renting of a room, is worth some amount of money. And so the experiment team received a letter from us on university letterhead and signed by the director of marine science that said, this is what we will, this is what we promise to do, this is how much it is worth. And that was the same as if they had just gone to the platform and donated that same amount of money using a credit card. So there are lots of ways to meet your goals. Um, and that's all I'll say for now. Looking forward to all of the questions. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was fantastic. Um, 
And that's all we have for speaking. We do have about 14 minutes right now for Q&A. So I'd love to ask all the speakers to um, come back on. And we can open it up to questions. Feel free to put any in the chat or um, raise your hand in the Zoom and you can, you can ask it yourself. Um, I do wanna ask one thing really quick, going back to the, the application process. Um, I've noticed in some cases people create their, um, you know, their project, their application, but it doesn't get tagged ocean solutions. Can you walk through real quickly just to make sure that I'm assuming it's mostly all ocean people here that it gets tagged as ocean solutions. So we can make sure that, um, you know, it's in this, this, um, particular process. I don't know if that's a Jenny or David question. Um, yeah, the experiment team has, so experiment foundation is separate than experiment. The experiment team, every time there's an ocean, they, they review every project. So if they see a project that they think seems like it was an ocean meant to be ocean solutions, they'll flag it, and send it to me. So we'll see it. I'm not okay, So it's not I'm just, a, it's not a specific thing that the applicant has to, has to do in the process. It's, it's better to apply through the ocean solutions page. Um, to start your, because then it's automatically tagged. Um, but if you just submit your project for review, we'll catch it. Okay. Great. And sometimes people submit projects through experiment that didn't know about the ocean solutions thing and that are good fits for it. And then we'll reach out to them proactively. Any questions from the audience? Thanks, Jenny, for putting that link in there. That, that'll take you straight to the Ocean Solutions page. I see a hand up. Oh, there's a hand up. Oscar. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, well, uh, I am undergraduate student from Peru. I studied mechatronics engineer. I'm not also a referral biologist. Uh, and well, I have a team and we're developing an ocean technology, but I I saw that in the Stripe page, uh, there is no Peru auction. So I don't know if we, is, is there any possibility that we can get any pound to support our projects? Or um, well, we don't know, uh, we don't have contact. Uh, in other countries so so okay well that's a um that's a tough one so i think the the experiment i'm just looking at the stripe one i don't know what their country growth strategy is it'd be good to know um i think i don't have any specific um ways to do that, like it's kind of beyond my capacity as the experiment foundation to make to find the contacts overseas. I think um, you could try. I, I I think it might be worth emailing folks and trying to kind of develop a partnership with someone at university um, or not even at a university, someone who can um, partner with you there. Katie may have uh, a better ideas about what to do, or Sarah, you've been you've done that. Um, maybe like a working with someone at an NGO, like Nature Conservancy, or something like that, um, could be uh, a good way to do it. I don't know, Sarah or Katie, do you have any other suggestions? Yeah, Sarah, how did you do it? Because obviously Somalia is not on the. Uh... On the Stripe list. Right. Somalia is not on the list either. And so I, you know, I had known Abdi Rahman before this project started as a student and had worked with him for about two years. So we had an existing relationship. Um, but I think that, you know, talk to your university. Oftentimes there are existing relationships, even through other departments, like maybe the geography department or 
some other department where there's a connection to a US-based institution that would give you that initial connection. And that's why I mentioned that one of the things Abdi Rahman did to build the relationship with me was just on WhatsApp, sending me pictures of fish all the time. And so that was one way that I really got to know him. So then when we decided to do this together, I felt that we were really a team and a partnership. And it wasn't just someone that I didn't know who was reaching out to me. Um, which can sometimes be a red flag if you don't have a pre-existing relationship. But I would probably go through your university's um, international studies group or, or whoever does those kind of exchange programs. Great, sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sarah. And, and Oscar, um, I'll put my email in the chat, but please reach out to me and we can just keep communicating so I can hear how that that process is working, you know, talking with your university, and maybe we can also try to come up with some other contacts. So I'll, oh. I'll add my email now to the chat. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Sure. Thanks, Oscar. Any more questions, either about you know the process generally, or if you have a particular situation, if you've started a project yourself and have hit a, a stopping point? We've got a lot of um, great brains and resources here at your disposal. Or if any of our speakers have anything to add, um, since we didn't give you too much time to talk, any additional um, you know in kind ideas, um, clever ways to do things. Uh, we chatted a couple weeks ago, Sarah, and I feel like you had lots of ways. Um, I mean, I can always talk more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, what, one of the things I'll say is that um, when transferring funds, the way that we went about it is experiment.com wrote a check to me um, because I'm based in the United States and then um, transferring funds into Somalia is um, it, most of the most of the fund transfers within the country are mobile money transfers. So that's very common in a lot of different countries, right? In East Africa, you have M-Pesa and all these different phone-based apps like Venmo and stuff to transfer money. Um, and so they sent me a check and then through a U.S. bank account connected to a Somali colleague of mine who also had a U.S. bank account. That's kind of how we got it into the country. And um, then we are keeping really close tabs, though, on amounts and transfers. So keeping pictures of the checks and keeping really close track of where the funds go and what they're being used for. So I think that's really important, um, not only to help experiment.com see where things are going, but just to be um, very much on the up and up as far as where those funds are going, how they're going and where they're being transferred. And also to keep in mind, the more times you transfer it, the more fees you end up paying. Um, so that's just something to think about. I don't know, we did not include fees in our budget. Um, looking back, that might have been something we could have included in our budget so that it was covered. Ultimately, it was only maybe $100 or something. So um, it, it, it didn't impact the ability to um, fund the project, but it's something to keep in mind. Thanks, Sarah. And that's also a good point. I think that's something that we haven't really touched on is um, is the, are there any reporting requirements? Is it just the lab notes? Um, do you need to submit a report at the end of the project, David, Jenny? Yeah, you have to submit a, a report, but it is through the lab notes. So and yeah, it's not like a, it's, um, it is a report, but it, you just do it through the lab notes. So that, that qualifies. Great. Is there any kind of financial reporting? Um, let me double, no, the, it's, it, I'll have to give the specific wording that my lawyers have, de, you know, crafted is on the grant agreement that you get. Okay, great. So that's something you'll know in advance. Yeah, exactly. In, in, in the process. Great. Hi, Caitlin, do you have a question? I do. Hi, everybody. And thanks for explaining this process. I just had one question for us, and I'm sure that other people have this as well. If you're working at an institution, when we receive a grant, we pay an institutional overhead. 
Um, and I'm just wondering if these grants are primarily to the individual that's testing this said um, ocean solution, or if it comes through an institution, how you deal with kind of the complications, because testing the ocean solution would most likely be through our institution. Um, that would be my question. Great question, um, Caitlin. David? Well, experiment can go to, so experiment funding and the experiment foundation funding can go to individuals or institutions. So it really is up to you. I mean, if you want to manage the the tax requirements and all of those things that go along with that, then you, you can do it as an individual. If you want to run it through your institution, you can do that too. Um, I know institutions have um, overhead rates. I, you know, that's kind of a little bit beyond my ability to negotiate with. I like one in a hundred or one in fifty. Like one in a hundred, I'll sometimes get some weird email from some administrator who shuts down a project and the researcher's like, what are you doing? So, I mean, it happens that these, these institutions will jump in the way, but um, you can, what, what's unique about this is we've, we've set this up specifically so that we can fund individuals. Um, yeah. So if it does go through an institution, is there a cap on the amount of overhead experiments willing to fund? I know some foundations, you know, will only pay 10% of overhead or something like that when some institutions have like 55% overhead. Um, yeah, no, well, we don't have any specific language like that. Um, hmm. maybe we should, um, but no, we don't, we're just trying to get it done. I mean, we're not, we're not. We don't feel like we're really market makers in that sense, but I think um, uh, yeah, I, that's uh, that's all I can say about it. I, 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 there, there's options. It really depends, and and I think, you know, I think it's talk to talk to your specific institution, but you could put that straight in the budget if you need to. Um, Great, thanks. We have another hand up, Mohammed. Thanks, Caitlin. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Mahmoud Hassan Ali. I'm working for the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources at the Federal Government of Somalia, based in Mogadishu. I'm a head section of the biodiversity and aquatic species. So I would like to ask uh, 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 Ms. Zara Glassy. Uh, I remember Mr. Zara, we met in Garoway uh, 2019 as a, a national fishery forum. Uh, which uh, the organization that she working in the school fish, uh, that's what I remember. Uh, anyway, uh, we know uh, this experiment funding is very difficult. Uh, really, 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 up to when you do it, it's not easy to get the funding uh, easily. So uh, I would like to ask Mr. Zara, since she was working in Somalia, although she was in some part of Somalia, and, uh, and, uh, but it's not only, uh, not, not all the Somalia. So how can we can, participate uh, for, or we can apply for this funding under your colleagues, as you mentioned, or other, other Minister of Fisheries, you know, in order to make a broader uh, this uh, funding uh, to succeed. Thank you. Mohammed, thank you. It's, it's very nice to hear from you again. Um, you know, I think that David might need to weigh on that question as well, because I don't know what any provisions may exist for funding government research. You know, Abdi Rahman was a student at East Africa University and is a graduate student now. Um, government research funds are probably something very different. Um, so I'd say, you know, feel free to reach out to our, our new director, Ahmed Yassin Moge, um, who is based in Hargeisa, or our research Research director in um, Mogadishu, whom you probably know very well. Um, so I, that's that would be my suggestion at this time. But I think the broader question is how the experiment opportunities can go into more countries. Um, and so there there are certainly ways to do that. And it sounds like David has a plan for expanding. I, I have a hope and wish to do that. I think the 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 reason we we're able to work. Uh, there in your case is because of you and because of that partnership like that was actually um you know you you were the reason we we're able to do that sir so i think there are countries that and and i have grant agreements that i have countries that i cannot we cannot like work in so we have to um 
we have to be aware and um, cognizant of that too. So we're doing our best. I mean, our vision, of course, is to enable scientific curiosity all over the world. And um, but there are like just like these legal frameworks that we have to play within. So um, yeah, I wish I, I wish I had a better answer. I just we're our kind of hands are tied, just like everybody everybody else. Thanks, Sarah Mohammed, um, David, for the question. So yeah, we yeah, are uh, back. Uh, so, uh, sorry. Uh, actually, uh, recently uh, we have been to uh, we have been to visit in Berbera and, and somewhere in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the Somaliland or coastal water. I mean, uh, we meet uh, Mr. Moge. As, I, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Zara, for your office. Um, let me say your former office, but you're no longer now for your square fish. But now we are, I know you're working for WWF. Uh, we together with uh, Dr. Gil uh, Prolic as a, uh, as a dolphin and, and, and the whales uh, uh, expertise and global level. We have been to assess in, in Berbera uh, up to the border in Djibouti, the place they call uh, Loya Ade, uh, as you know it. So uh, since that time, we have seen a lot of gaps of uh, marine conservation of ocean solutions. So uh, sea turtles, people are selling in the Berbera market as a free, there's no any regulation. Oil, they sell it in the market. We already, Dr. Dr. Gil Brolik, they, she knows that, and we've taken all the photos there. So, uh, so also, also uh, Mr. Moge, he told us, uh, your colleague in, Berber, in Hargeza, he told us, he, he has a plan in MPA, MPA uh, uh, project to design MPA, a marine protected area, which is there is no an MPA in Somali, whole in Somali coast. So uh, Mr. Moge told us, we have a plan uh, to create MPA in somewhere in the Saila area, in, in, in border between Djibouti and Somaliland. We still we look the looking funds. They still the looking funds. Uh, for example, fund for awarenesses, people to be aware, and not trade for the endangered species like a sea turtles. And uh, also, when they saw the dolphin, they must be released uh, and safe back to the ocean. When they saw about uh, the whales, Mohammed. yes. So Bye. sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. I, I'm I'm so excited to hear about the enthusiasm for the proposed marine protected area over there. That, um, as you know, was one of the things that was just starting as I was leaving the program. What I'm hearing is that there are so many shovel-ready projects ready in the region. I really encourage you to work with the Berbera Maritime Fisheries Academy and maybe some of the other universities that we built up relationships with through Project Kaloon and use this platform in a similar way. So it's, it's, it's really great to hear from you. What I know is that I think we're running out of time for the recording. Um, so I might see if Katie wants to close. Thank you. I want to second Sarah's. Thank you, Mohammed, um, for your enthusiasm. This is very exciting. Um, and I, yes, this is all the time we have for today. Uh, for updates on this initiative, many more ocean events and opportunities, I invite you to come to the Ocean Discovery League website, sign up for our newsletter. And finally, um, and most importantly, sincere thanks to all of our speakers, Jenny and David, for walking us through the process, Sarah, Michelle, Ryan, and Salome for talking about your experiences. Um, this is very exciting and um, so many opportunities I can see here for making a lot of great projects possible. Um, so thank you all for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing a lot of great proposals on experiment.com. Have a great day.